Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Behind the Edit. Episode 11 to be in fact, which is my favorite number. Back when I played sports for about two seconds in my childhood, I was trying to pick a number for t-ball and uh, number one was taken, as it always is, and my dad said, you know what son, you know what's better than number one? Number 11, because it's two ones. And I was hooked. I told all the other kids, you know what's better than number one? Number 11, it's two ones. And then they're all like, oh my God. I wanna be number 11. If you're new here, this is a series where you get to see me edit a photo from start to finish. I'll also be throwing in some tips and tricks along the way. Please don't forget to subscribe. If you wanna see more videos like this, you can also check me out on Instagram if you wanna see more photos like this one, as well as the behind the scenes of my life at Miles of Color. If you're a fan of the series or if you're a current subscriber slash follower, today is a special episode because I am trying out a new format. So let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Today we're taking this photo and compositing it into this photo of the amazing Sarah Adams. We're also throwing in some crazy rocks that I found on Google Images. Don't tell Google. Little disclaimer before the video starts, this is not a tutorial. However, this video is for you to watch, me to make, and for us to have fun together. With that being said, let's roll the intro. So I haven't even touched this photo yet. Nothing's really been changed besides a little four x five crop for Instagram. I'm gonna make a new layer here and I'm just going to draw on top of it and just see if my idea is going to work out. I'm not good with it like a pen or painting or anything like that, which is probably why I am a Photoshop user because that's really what works out for me. Anything else, I'm terrible at it. Okay, so this is going to be like the color I think that I want to use for my rock slash crystal here. Let's see and then maybe like a, some like floating pieces here. I think that looks cool already. Welcome guys, this is <laughs> this is the photo. This We're done, we're all done. No, I'm just kidding. I'm liking this idea already, so I wanna add some movement to the rock by throwing in some little rocks around it and making it glow so it looks like she's like casting a spell because if you haven't noticed down here, in the bottom right corner it says the book of spells. So why not get a little witchy with And then I also think I'm gonna have like, like these like flying kind of like specks going through here to add some movement as well. Wow, a masterpiece. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna do some Harry Potter stuff. Perfect, so now that I made a complete mess of myself, let's use this reference photo and get started with our basic adjustments and coloring in Lightroom. Okay, cool, my first little tip here, which is my favorite setting, this little tool is at the bottom of your menu in Lightroom and it's at the very back of your menu on Camera Raw. It's really fun, you can make your own cool little color scheme here. It just adjusts the primary colors of your overall image and it kind of saves me a lot of time, but I'm not gonna do anything too crazy with it here, but just check out what it can kind of do. Perfect, now that I'm done with all my basic exposure and coloring adjustments, let's open this bad boy up in Photoshop where the real fun is about to happen. I'm so excited, I hope you guys are excited too. Because I consider myself more of a digital artist than a photographer, my retouching is very cartoonish slash animated because that's kind of what I enjoy, that's my personal style. I'm going to achieve this look by using frequency separation and dodge and burn. You can click the card up here and check out my tutorial on exactly how I retouch if you're interested. Someone's gonna stop me and think that this is like some sort of skin condition. This is just a spray tan. This was actually like Sarah's request and she wanted me to mix it out. So that's what we're doing. Okay, now that I finally finished all of that retouch and all of the getting the distractions all out of the photo, let's have a little coffee break, you and I. I wanna know, are you a coffee or tea drinker? Because me, I'm definitely a coffee person. 
anxiety juice. When I was younger, my mom would like give me a little bit of coffee on the side when she would have coffee in the morning. But by the time I was in high school, I was a full blown addict. You know, looking back on my life, I think my caffeine addiction explains my whole, you know, being five foot six thing. But is that like a rumor or is it, is it true? Is it fact that caffeine can stunt your growth? Because if so, that's the only thing I would like to go back and change. Maybe, you know, push off the caffeine drinking until about 18 or something like that. I mean, it was great in middle school when I was five, six, but then high school, I was like, Hello? Okay, at this point, I'm just rambling and avoiding getting back into the edit, but now is the fun part. We're going to be going crazy with the crystals. I'm gonna paint this crystal blue and then add a bunch of shards flying around. Okay, so quick note, I'm probably going to import the actual rocks that I use for the edit that I posted on Instagram. However, I'm gonna do this in front of you guys just to give you the second tip of the day, which is adding in objects and making them look realistic. So my first tip here is I'm matching colors, right? So I'm matching the color of this crystal with this blue crystal as well. So if they're all different colors, it'd be kind of weird. It wouldn't really make sense. Of course, when you're compositing, you want some variation with your images that you're using as well. So I'm gonna throw this one in here and throw it off to the side. And also keep in mind when making it look realistic. In just a second here, I'm going to be blurring all these crystals because if you notice, her hand is further from the camera and it's a little bit blurred out as well as the crystal in her hand. So of course, the things flying around her hand are going to be blurred as well, or else it's like, why are these in focus? Like cameras don't work that way. Obviously this is fake. Even though we all know it's fake, the point of blurring it is to make it appear, at least you're trying to be realistic, which I would like to say is the whole point of surrealism. Cool, now we have our crystals blurred. Let's add some actual glow to these things. I'm gonna make a new layer and then press X, which is going to switch me back to this blue color that I created earlier. And I'm just going to use this brush tool very, very lightly. I'm just going to like brush little circles around these guys just to make them get the sense of glowing. Really cool, right? You can even do like a little bit on Sarah's face here. Just kidding, not gonna do that. And this whole thing is just really going to sell the point that some magic is happening. This is glowing. It looks so cool, guys. I love this. Oh my gosh. And then I'm probably going to blend it on a screen mode right here. And then I'm going to drop the actual layer that I used in my original PSD onto this one because it's a little sloppy. But that's how you do it. Next step is going to be super fun. I'm going to make the text glow on the book. Wow. I'm going to do this by adding some saturation to the text and just drawing it back on. So let's make a saturation layer down here and I'm going to mess with the settings, negative 10, just to change the color of the text a little bit yellow, and let's boost it to like 70. Okay, that looks wild, but I'm going to click Command I on this white layer here, and you can't see it, and that's perfect, because I'm going to paint the text. Let me do that real quick. Cool, we just made the text glow and now it's time to move on to the exposure and coloring of the final image. I'm so excited we're almost done with this image. I have a feeling this next part might be kind of crazy here, so just bear with me. I've added this film grain and this coloring. It's time for my last two steps. I'm going to click Command, Alt, Shift, 
E that's going to create this new layer of, of everything I've done so far combined into one layer and I'm going to make some final adjustments using camera raw and then sharpening. <laughs> And boom, I think, uh, I think we did it. I think that's it. And wait for it. Here's the before photo and here is the after Yay! photo. We finally made it Mission through this complete. edit. That was super fun. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Behind the Edit. I hope you had just as much fun watching this video as I did making it, even though I was kind of stressed out the whole time making this video, but I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like the video if you did, subscribe if you haven't, follow me on Twitter and Instagram for exclusive content, as well as the behind the scenes of my life and just keep up with, with me as a person. I'd love to talk to you and connect with you there. Today's shout out is John at John Snip. Check out his work, he's super good. Link down below. Follow Sarah Adams as well, her link is down below. I'm Miles at Miles of Color everywhere online, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye fam.